Hi, Tiffany Kellogg here. Thanks for joining us for one of our interview series. As we're stuck at home with social distancing, it's an opportunity for us to learn more so we can earn more. Hope you enjoy. And zooming like a pro. Uh, and we're joined today by um, Valerie Bogle. Uh, she is an amazing photographer. And while Zoom isn't necessarily her specialty, uh, she definitely has that photographer's eye. And I think how we appear on camera is so very important for us and us creating our success. Uh, she's so she spends her days as like the art director, designer, she's been a model. Uh, she's always been uh, drawn to the creative side of things. Throughout her career, she's always been around the camera from conceptualizing and art directing studios for clients like Publix, Royal Caribbean, as well as most of the Marriott hotel brands like Residence Inn, Marriott, Fairful Inns and Suites, Spring Hill Suites and Courtyard. Not to mention in front of the camera for companies like Coca-Cola, Florida Tourism, Publix, Cash and Carry, Bright House Networks, Carnival Cruise Lines, and so many more. Um, and so she she definitely captures the images. And she, here she's kind of known as how do you put it, Valerie? Uh, magazine style photography. Magazine style photography. Yep, that's right. Um, and she's here today to, to help us out talking about how to zoom like a pro. So Valerie, what, what do you have for us on this idea of zooming like a pro? Well, just to reiter reiterate what you said, I'm definitely not a Zoom expert. I, my first time using Zoom was when all this kind of um, shutdown happened. But when I got in there and saw that there's definitely ways to present yourself better and because of what I do as a photographer, I'm always looking at ing looks on you and angles. It was only a natural thing that um, it was something easy for me to help others do well. Um, Cause as you'll typically see in a lot of Zoom meetings are um, you know, things that you, you can't really see the person and there's a lot of just different obstacles. So I just have a few tips of what to do and what not to do, how to look your best, present your best. And um, I have a little quick little, um, presentation I can show you yeah. so all right you see this so I've got um, seven st simple steps to set up a zoom call so this is stuff you're already doing um, more than likely is downloading zoom signing up or signing in um, up here let me push the play button sorry about that um, you've got you've gone through all this if you're on the call but if you're setting up a call um, you want to make sure that you have all your settings right and before you go on the call there's different things that you can set yourself up with like to not have your picture show up right away and to have your mute off so that you have a minute to like get settled put your coffee in place and not you know show your butt coming into the seat or whatever so just kind of gives you a little more um, seconds to look prepared you're, you're going to schedule your meeting, send your email out to whoever you want to participate. Then you're having the meeting or socializing, however you're using the Zoom. And then um, obviously you can share your screen and talk together and go over lots of different things. So um, for the purpose of this, just to take it to the next level, I have what, to, what not to do. So this is what you see a lot. You may hopefully don't recognize yourself here, but if you do, we'll give you some tips of how to, um, how to change that. So what you don't do is show up in your pajamas and this is really not a flattering angle by the way um, you'll create a double chin whether you have one or not showing shooting from below don't forget to comb your hair and or do your makeup as a woman um, it's okay to put on more makeup especially if you're lit properly you're probably going to get washed out a little bit so it helps to have a little bit more um, do you uh, do you talk at all about turning on the um, filter on zoom here um, no, but I wouldn't recommend it. No, like there, I, no, because if you see, like, I, it makes you look almost animated, like, like a cartoon, because the gradations, like, it might look good when you're looking at it, but I think when other people show up, they look like their skin is gradated, and then it's like, oh, they have the filter on. So then it's I like I would just rather see you like you, you know, personally. Gotcha. But it's it's a personal preference. It is an option. You can do it. Okay. Um, I just think it looks a little funny. I can, you can, I can tell at least when I see them do it. I'm like, they don't need that. Okay. <laughs> so um, you don't want to position yourself too small in the frame. A lot of times you'll see, you know, like somebody's off in the distance. Keep out, keep an idea, of, uh, uh, look out for what's in the background, like clutter and things that are going to be distracting. Um, 
a lot of this boils down to not be a distraction. Like you just want to be in the meeting. Don't look so bored that you can't stop yawning. Like, you know, you got to keep in mind that this is more like a face to face meeting. It's, we might be meeting with a group of people, but we're, it's almost like we're sitting across the table from someone. So if you're eating, um, you know, drinking or whatever, everyone's looking at you do this chewing. It's just not flattering. So um, just kind of keep in mind that everyone sees you and the more you're moving around, the, the more people are drawn to see what's going on. Question um, from Rich. Is it okay we ask some questions? As we yes, go? please. So for those of you uh, on board with us, throw your information in the chat. Uh, Melissa, let us know who she is because uh, we've got Melissa with SEC Inspection and Pro Health Pest Control. Thank you, Thank Melissa, you. for being here. Uh, Richard wanted to know makeup for men. I I don't for the purpose of this. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, you know, I mean, if you're like, if the lighting changes how your color looks or you look absolutely pale. You know, it's fine. I, I don't think it's really necessary, though. If you're going on camera for like, a, you know, an actual commercial or something that's more important, then yes, by all means, I would do that. If you it always just, get like a little face lotion that has some color in it. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have to be foundation. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, exactly. cool. Uh, so where are we? People are using the phone. Like you always see everyone. It's common that you're holding your phone vertically, but when you're doing a zoom, you want to turn it sideways because then you're going to fill the frame. So when you see the gallery of people, you're going to see yourself closer and it's a little harder to see when you're holding it like this. And oh, sorry, dog. This is one of the things I recommend the lawnmower is going. It's perfect timing. <laughs> hey, these two does have a little little bark she doesn't like i think she's barked once since i've been social distance oh. no on the vertical because the other day i was doing um i was actually doing a program and I, so i had my laptop set up here and i had my phone in front of the whiteboard and when i tried to put it horizontal to record me in front of the whiteboard it actually flipped me up so i was sideways yeah, I think you just have to start that way. That I think when you're using it, like if you're using it to record, once you start in, in the vertical portrait position, you can't turn it. Gotcha, so I start, I can try starting it, okay. This is a whole separate lesson, but if you do record everything in vertical, um, and you can in like iMovie or different programs you can right but i was like i was actually doing it live on and let's say i practiced in advance to see yeah. who oh, this is showing up sideways so now i'll have to check and, and test it out with it horizontal to start yeah because yeah. you feel the frame and people just see you better so when you're small like you can kind of see in the little thumbnail it's really small but you're only taking up one little section of the window so it's just nicer people can see your face because you're looking at so much it's you're going to be so small it's better to be able to see you and richard wanted to know tablet ipad phone versus desktop whatever is easiest for you I and mean, they all pretty much have the same features i think i prefer the laptop just because like the gallery and everything i can have all in one window versus like on the phone where you're having to swipe to see more people or um you know see the chat or whatever so it's a little bit different but it's and also depends on the quality of the camera of whatever you're using. So if it's an older machine, your camera might not be as good where it versus a lot of the phones, the camera's better. Lighting you'll see is like key though. Like that makes all the difference. <clears throat> um, so this is not to set up under a light. Overall, you're, well, it's not uncommon for people that are holding their phone and so they're looking down. And then what you're doing is looking up people's nose at their chin, you know, you tend to create a double chin. If you have like a light over top of you, um, it will create like a haze. And if it's directly over top of you, you'll start to see like some harsh shadows. So for the most flattering light, it's, it's not ideal. I mean, it's not the worst case scenario, but it's not ideal. So we're going for ideal. Um, so you don't want to go outside if the sun's so bright, you're going to be squinting. I know a lot of people want to be outside right now. Um, you see, but you see this, like, and they're trying to see and, and you know, whatever. So maybe if we were outside, but we were in the shade or underneath something. Shade. Yes, exactly. In the shade. So, um, and that we'll go that in the do's, but yes, okay. that's the, do be in the shade. You can still be outside, but a lot of times people are looking for a, a nice background, but those, that's where the sun's coming from. So that doesn't work. So, um, don't set up under dappled light. Same kind of idea. Like if you're outside and the sun's hitting, you can kind of see like there are um, 
hot, hot spots on your face and then dark shadows on your face. It's not the end of the world, people, but it just looks better to, to be it, have like a flat light. Um, have the light coming from, from behind you. That's kind of what I mentioned a second ago. So you get that like sudden glare spot and then things behind you kind of blow up. Um, the, the shooting from below or um, if, if you are even at a slight angle below, just keep in mind um, what's behind you. You know, like what, what are people seeing? A lot of times you see a little head you know, like coming out of the frame, you know, when people are on, um, but people want to, and I think it's part of it is people are like, I don't really want to be on camera. You know, that's probably the biggest thing, but if you can look good, then, you know, and let me just say, I hear it all the time, like all the time in the studio that I hate having my picture taken. I hate being on camera. I hate the way I look, but if you can make yourself look better you're going to be okay. And right. the truth is nobody's paying as much attention to you as you are. So, but you still want to look as good as you can. Yeah. Um, don't forget to watch your background. That's what I mentioned before. A lot of times you'll see the fan, you know, <laughs> and the ceiling kind of makes a fun, you know, one of those whirly hats, I guess. But I was, um, I was doing an interview yesterday and the gal was saying she was watching and behind the person they actually had on their TV to a political station. So now you know their political views and it was very right, attractive right. because it was moving around in the background. Yeah, so people are watching the TV and not you anyway, so yeah. Same thing if there's, you know, pets running around and, you know, kids and piles of laundry or whatever, it's just not something you... It was not a clean area. It. <sighs> And that's like, I'm set up where I, I created my little desk area and I just have a corner behind me. Now I actually painted and put up stuff so I, I could, I could be on zoom. This is actually, I did it about two years ago. So I was ahead of the times. Uh -huh. so there's, there's just the wall. So, I mean, if I showed you this half of the room, um, because right now my house is torn apart because my husband's remodeling everything. So I've got plants and you know furniture and all my like my light and my microphone and all my stuff is just like a mess but at least from here it looks like it's you know nice and, and clean right exactly exactly like I have actually a green screen behind me which I don't expect everyone to have but you can use the green tablecloth and pin it to the wall or that's for virtual backgrounds. Pull another well, thing. And I, I found the virtual background on my, um, cause I've got a blank area uh, over there. I have to make sure I'm on the camera pointing and it was, it's a blue background, but yeah. it, it's still the virtual background works as long as there's nothing else on it. If you're yeah. doing it. And you, yeah. And you can identify that in the preferences. Like it yeah. will let you specify like to click on what is your background. So if you have a solid color, but if it's not a solid color, uh, I mean, it's designed most for green screens, but it will work, it, like you said, it will work for other screens. But if it's, if you have like a patterned background or something behind you, it's fighting for like, what do I cut out? What do I cut out? And then you get that whole like weird green, you know, the trailing thing where it's trying to read the background. Uh, Rich wants to know how much did you invest in a green screen? Uh, well, I'm a photographer, so I have one for my clients um, when I do remote stuff, but you know, 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Um, and I don't think it's necessary if you're not on online all the time. Like I said, if you, you know, have a green tablecloth or curtain or something, you, that will work too, as long as it's kind of like a solid um, green. Or like Tiffany said, if you go, like you have a solid color wall, you can set it up that it will try to read that. But they're not expensive. All right, so don't set up in a dark room with the window behind you. You'll see this a lot um, because the camera, your camera will ultimately adjust and try to, to read you. Um, but the first thing it's doing is reading the light. And so you might see what's behind you for a second and but then when it adjusts you get like super grainy and hard you know kind of hard to see it just doesn't look very good what that reminds me of you remember back in the 80s they would always bring the people on and have them talking but like you couldn't see their face and their voice was changed so <laughs> like the witness identity. <laughs> yeah and it, that's what it makes me think of when people are, are doing that um, right. Cheryl, Cheryl would like to know does it have to be green or can white or black pop-up work too? 
Um, I haven't tried them, but Tiffany says she's used it on a flat color wall and it's worked. I know that I've used like on the back of my green is blue. Um, and the main reason is if you're wearing, if you're using a green screen, you can't wear green, so you need a different color. Um, so my guess is it probably would work. I, you can just I, try saw, it. I saw Eric Bunch use a white pop-up. Okay. So when you're in the preferences, zoom, you go to preferences, and then on the left-hand side where you'll see virtual background, when you click that, you'll be able to choose what your background is. If it's not, they have some stock ones that were there. Some people say they don't have them, but oh, that's lovely. Well, and that's because I've got the stuff, you know, it's an interesting thing because I have the stuff behind me. It doesn't work. Let me see if my wires will, will go. With yeah, because it's trying to read everything around you. Yeah, versus when I'm over here and it's all, so this is me on the blue. Okay. Not perfect. Now, do you have, yeah, because you're still kind of wavy. Do you have um, on the, in the uh, virtual background preferences do you have it clicked i have a green screen or that you well, have a so my computer is so old it doesn't give me the option of not using a green screen oh okay well it, in the in the zoom preferences like when you're in virtual background yeah there's an option at the bottom that says i have a green screen or i'm using a green screen or something so if you have that you would click that and then you have the option there's a little button right below the photo that you've uploaded that you can click and then click the background so um, I can show you how to do that. Do you want to take a second to do that? Sure. All right. Let me get out of this one. Again, I'm going to pause this year and do a new one. As soon as I can find my mouse, where did it go? If I can tell you how to use Zoom, I just can't use my computer. If not, I could, uh, I could yeah, share. I literally can't. All right. So let me, sh I'll show you all mine while she's finding her stuff. Hopefully. So here's my, oh, there we go. Um, so when you, why is it doing that? So hopefully you can see <laughs> down here all my mess because it's not pulling zoom up. Um, yeah, you have to specifically share that. So is it showing? Can you see the virtual background? Yeah. yeah okay. Yes. So I just went down here to stop camera but the arrow beside it choose virtual background and so i've got the different virtual backgrounds that i've uploaded and then you can do a plus add image and right something else you can add. i've got most of mine from canva though i know that you are selling some pretty cool looking uh stock images valerie that hey. you you captured yeah in that so the in that window that you were just in at the very bottom it says i have a green screen so if you're not using um, the virtual background with the green screen, you would click that off. Um, can you go back to that, Tiffany? Yeah. I just had lost control of my mouse for some reason. So, because when I, I have a green screen, um, it won't let me because my computer's so old. Okay, but so you would turn that on if you do have a green screen and then um, there is a, which I don't see it on yours. You would click on there. There would be on maybe on the newer computers or depending on what's compatible up underneath the window, you would, where you are, there would be a little button that, that you would then be able to sample your background. So what's kind of funny if you sample your face, kind of like you were doing before, like if you picked a lighter color, it would fill all that. Gotcha. So, so anyways. Did that answer your question or did we just give you all kinds of other information? <laughs> <laughs> if not, I have found that Google has really great, uh, not Google, Zoom has really great help. <laughs> I'm like, I'm stuck. But yeah, you can yeah. go to Zoom. Their, their help is usually pretty easy. Yeah. All right. So you want to take back over and tell us some more don'ts and then let's get to the do. Yes. I just. And again, as you guys have questions, please pop them in. The chat box and I will ask Valerie her answer. Mm, here we go. Let me go back to where we were. Okay. So we're back to don'ts. Don't take a call <laughs> while you're on a, on a meeting. It's quite obvious not to mention you wouldn't do it in person. I mean, unless it's important, obviously, I would say if that's the case, you can always stop video so that your profile picture comes up or your name. Yes, just like that. To mute yourself so that you're not, you know, 
distracting and people aren't thinking that you're rude. Um, don't text, same, same idea. It's obvious when it's going on, it's a distraction. Um, don't have side conversations, you know. <laughs> oh, I, I always love it when the spouse or the kid, you can tell. Yeah, get down, stop, you know, I'm in a meeting. So this is kind of a cool way to do it though. If you mute yourself, you can kind of be somewhat discreet and still talk. Oh, wow. Well, I guess you can't be as animated as I am. You have to try. Yeah, you have to subdue yourself for sure. But, you know, at least you I will not be doing it. that. <laughs> <laughs> you can conceal it just a little bit. Um, don't treat your camera like a mirror. You know, you're picking stuff out of your eyes and looking at your teeth or fixing your hair. Uh, Rich wants to know Zoom versus Google Hangout. I don't know anything about Google Hangout. Sorry. This Zoom is all new to me too. I would say the same principles apply. Like whenever you're on any of these go-to meeting, you know, FaceTime yeah. or whatever, if it's a professional setting, you know, you still want to look like a professional. Obviously, I think people, and given what we're dealing with, are more understanding of distractions and kids and whatever. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if you're meeting with new clients or potential clients and whatever, I just, as long as you're presenting yourself as professional as possible, you're dressing the part, you still, you know, look like you're ready to do business. I don't think it matters where you're actually having the, the call. Okay, so now what to do. Yay, let's talk some do's. Yay, and so we talked a lot of them as we were, what not to do, you can tell kind of what to do. Right. Well, set up in the shade. So we mentioned that if you're gonna be outside, be in the shade because it creates a flat light. So again, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to your backgrounds, but at least you can see like the lighting on my face compared to what we were dealing with before with the dappled light and the light behind you, whatever. At least it's, it, it's a pleasant light. Be sure you're positioned in the frame well. So we covered that on the what not to do, you know, if you're sitting down really low or you're just peeking through your, your thing, you know, it's just better if people can actually see your face, you're talking and they can feel like they're really having a conversation with you. Yeah, I actually have my laptop is sitting on, okay, this is totally me. Um, I needed some elevation for mm -hmm. my laptop. So it's actually sitting on a uh, beer case, like a, <laughs> a, a case of beer box, like there's no beer in it. But that yeah. gave me the elevation I need because when yes. I was down lower, I just felt it was just like a really weird, camera angle so I yes. need that extra lift that's um, a good point that's a good so point and I, I have the same thing I'm on well not on a beer case but I'm on a, I have a couple of books underneath mine and yeah. you can kind of see like you you're normally gonna probably be more pushed away for how you're working you know your your laptop's gonna go back a little bit so you kind of want to pull it towards you so it's not necessarily the way you would typically work at your laptop in this case um, if you are using an iPhone or an iPad, um, the iPhones, I recommend there's a, I have it actually like a little tripod selfie stick. Yeah. I have a light on it. Um, so you can put a, you can have, if you had two, you could put your iPhone in one, but you want it kind of at eye level so that people are feeling like they're looking at you versus being down. And this is just kind of shows you quickly like what light does. So if the light's too close, you see what happens. Yeah. If it's overhead this isn't so bad at this point but you get some really <laughs> funky you know it's like shining right there on your part like are we yeah. like apart for a specific reason obviously this is kind of like when you're kids and you're like tell the ghostly stories or whatever but um so kind of like at this eye level level a, a slight slightly down directly on you is probably the best so i just set that up behind my camera i'm um, behind my laptop and um, that way I, I am least lit in front of my thing. And then I frame myself so that I'm tight. Um, in my case, look, I have the mirror image thing, so I don't know which way to point. I've created, you know, virtual backgrounds that have messaging on them that, you know, shows up and you just have to watch where you're positioning yourself to. Yeah. You see my, my shoulders need to be more narrow. <laughs> <laughs> So consider creating a virtual background. So we talked about that. Um, like Tiffany mentioned, I do, I have created um, a gallery full of backgrounds for purchase for royalty free stock images when they're just depending on their price, depending on size and what the images are. Um, 
but it's super simple to use. I have a video, a YouTube video on it um, that shows how to create your own, how to take your own pictures if you wanted to do that and then upload them and create um, your own virtual backgrounds or that is something that you know I'm able to help with if someone needs help doing that customizing them question mm -hmm. um, Rich wants to, Richard wants to know best colors for wardrobe on video it depends on your background I would say what I recommend in most cases are um, bolder colors brighter colors um, something that doesn't clash with where you're going to be sitting um solids are usually the safest bet um i don't think it matters like color wise unless like if you have like oranges or reds sometimes will actually bounce back into your face and may make you look a little redder oh gosh sorry um but yeah i don't think it's that important okay cool Personally. all right uh, make sure your light's most flattering. So that's what we talked about, kind of moving the light around. And you can see from all the different um, images what works and what doesn't work. And then that's it. Look how that lovely thing there. <laughs> but it, are looks you like there's, it looks like we've got some opportunities here. Uh, your YouTube channel is, what is your YouTube channel? Because it looks like how to video conference like to pro, how to create your own virtual backgrounds. Uh, how to Zoom church with your family and friends. So it looks like we've got some stuff here. If we wanted to go to your YouTube, where would that be? Yeah, it's um, Flourish Magazine Style Photography. I would tell you I have the special URL set up, but it is not easy to, to find. So I would just look up Flourish Magazine Style Photography and you should find it. I can put a link in the chat too. Yeah, that works. Um, and then I also have, this is the gallery I mentioned. So, um, on my page that I use that I used to use as my website that is now kind of like my photo delivery for my clients I've created all these different galleries that have just a variety of images that you can use for your own backgrounds and you know one thing to keep in mind too like if you did find something that's a sharp background you can keep it sharp so it looks like you're sitting right there I tend to like it just a little softer focus um, and that's something that you can do in Canva also easily um, but if you're going to put you know any messaging on it logos or whatever typically unless you have like a really solid space that you know something can be knocked out of or it's not you know conflicting with your logo then usually the soft focus just makes it a little easier to do that but so there's just plenty of you know different backgrounds that you can use look like you're sitting at the Vinoy or some <laughs> resort or in your office building or whatever the it's like it looked like armature works I saw too yes there is armature works there too good eye good yeah. eye so yeah um, so that's it any other questions or yeah so if you have any questions for Valerie uh, put those in the chat box so we can ask her before we wrap up our call here in just a couple minutes. We always appreciate the, the questions. It gives us an opportunity to answer the things that, that you're looking for. All right, so Richard wants to know, have you ever seen a video camera with a zoom lens? A video camera with a zoom lens, like an actual zoom, like the conference zoom lens or a zoom like you can zoom it lens? I'm gonna let you put that in the <laughs> answer. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 Melissa asked, did anyone else type anything in the chat? I only see my posts and nothing else. Um, so, Melissa, we have had some people that have been commenting, uh, but they've been sending it just to the panelists instead of to the panelists and to the attendees as well. Um, Richard uh, clarified Zoom to enlarge. Uh, no, I haven't. Well, I haven't seen either. I was just curious what you were, <laughs> what yeah. you were going to say, but no, I, I haven't seen that. Mm -mm. So I was on a zoom call last week. I'm on a lot of zoom calls lately mm -hmm. and the gentleman did have a, a Mac and there is, um, I want to say he said it was like 20 bucks and I don't know if I wrote it down somewhere or not. Um, oh my gosh, who knows? I, I've got lots of notes all over the place. Uh, but it's actually, uh, it was able to move his camera around a little bit. So zoom in a little bit or left or right side. Um, I know he had that for a Mac computer that had that opportunity. I remember Spencer talking about something like that, like the vid, 
vid something like there is another app or program or something i haven't used it okay so i'm just <clears throat> sitting relatively close to my do i look clear to you in in what you're seeing or it's because it, you know i can only see how my computer shows I, I think i think you're fine um though i guess it depends on depending on how your setup was if your setup was more was further away but you wanted to appear closer without being closer um that could be an option but right. yeah this is right. this is a mac and when it's mac goes over my head because i'm still pc yeah that's okay it's okay. um i think i saw another question here i do i do see one oh, tony you, asked did you create your visual yes um so the picture is a picture that i shot um in the vinoy and then i took it into uh canva and and then added the text to my logo and uploaded the picture and did all the the stuff there oh so you actually are using canva as well because i know oh, you've got yeah. like cooler software Oh yeah, no, I mean, I do. I was telling someone this in a previous meeting. Um, I'm a designer by, you know, career for many, many years. And so I have all the fancy programs and I can do that. But when we're doing something like this, that is like, you know, I can knock them out super fast um, and not have to search for as much stuff because they have so many resources there already. So um, as long as you're kind of keeping it on brand with what you normally put out there and it looks like and feels like your your brand I don't have any problem with it because it's super easy to use and they have a free version um, I will say I have the pro version which is even better, but it, and it's not that expensive. Yeah uh, but so it's a free one. I asked the question wrong. Um, so Tony wants to know um, how did you create the presentation? Oh That was in keynote. Okay um, so it's like PowerPoint for Max. Um, so same, same, same. Um, I did, it's funny because it's a combination of things. The first selection was, so I have the picture I have here for the background. Sorry, I've got my fan going, so it's blowing my background. Um, I did, I found a lot of the icons in Canva because it's super easy and it's included. And so then I was able to download those bring them into the PowerPoint uh, keynote and then animate them how I wanted to do all that there. And then the same with the pictures that they, they, they were just pictures that I had already um, done. And so I pulled them from the how to zoom like a pro video that I did and just used them because I'd already done them and then just uploaded and animated everything there. Cool. So, yeah. All right. So that's it. Yes, I think. Well, she hasn't come back with another question. So okay. hopefully uh, that did it for us. Um, so, uh, if they want to get in touch with you, whether it's to, you know, get some of the stock images to ask, uh, you know, maybe set up a consultation with you, uh, for some in-depth and, you know, personal, not free, but paid, you know, let's, let's get Valerie to help me out. Uh, what's the best way to, to reach you? Um, well, a couple of different ways they can call, obviously. Um, uh, my number is 727-497-7427. You can find me on my website, which is shootwithflourish.com. And I just posted in the um, comments the link to the gallery if you're interested in royalty-free images. And there's also an, an, um, a button there if you, you know, wanted any custom stuff or needed any more information, different sizes or whatever, you can find that um, just by shooting us an email that, that would go through that site. And then, of course, I'm trying to keep up with adding more content on YouTube for um, just things that are helpful to people. So um, you can subscribe there. That'd be great. Cool. And then Rich had a question. Um, photos from smartphone direct to Zoom. So meaning do you upload from photos from your smartphone to Zoom, like for a virtual background? Is that what you're asking? Because that, if yes, that's yes. Okay, yes, you can do that. Absolutely. Um, I think, like, depending on the phone that you have, um, like the, the later phones, like the iPhone 11, I'm not sure about the Samsung, but I think have the feature where you can do a soft focus. And I know, like, even on some of the earlier ones, like the portrait on the iPhone, um, lets you focus on one thing and soften the background. That gives you that kind of, like, similar look to what I have. 
um, I think looks better than a super crisp background, but it's all personal preference. So you can just take a regular picture of just anything. Like I have sample pictures, not here directly with me, but um, where I just walked around the house and have taken pictures. Here I am sitting in front of like my living room set or, you know, the dining room area, whatever, clean and uncluttered, and then load them up as my virtual background. And I so want to do that for my bookshelf room. Yeah, see? It echoes in there because it's so big and <laughs> the lighting sucks and I don't have a desk or anything in there, but I would love to do it. I could just go yeah. take a picture of it. That's brilliant. That's why I'm here. Glad I could help. <laughs> All right, last chance to ask Valerie any questions that you might have for her. And I'm trying to pull up one of my pictures because I want to show one of my pictures. Not one of my pictures, one of your pictures before we head out of here. Pictures of me or pictures of you? A picture that you took. Oh, okay. I one can't of my favorite see ones that. that's not, <laughs> not human related. But I don't know if I just downloaded it or not. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. I, I figured you <laughs> All right, so no other questions yet. So I figure, um, you know, we they, you don't want your dogs disturbing you. However, my dog, she likes to sleep behind here. So this is her. Um, but just to share, this is a, no. This is a photo that Valerie did of her at one of our Brewing Up businesses a couple of years ago. <laughs> so I always just think that she is adorable. Uh, Drinking her beer. Yeah, that was classic. You um, don't do that every day. No, you don't. And no dogs were harmed in the drinking. You know, she didn't actually drink the beer. So, Valerie, thank you so very much. We have lots of people in the comments saying thanks. We appreciate it. Great uh, conversation. Super helpful. Uh, so, thanks, everybody, for being here. We, we so appreciate it. Thank you, Valerie. Thanks. Uh, for sharing stuff. Check out her on YouTube. Check out her on social media. Reach out if you have any questions, comments, uh, anything that she can help you with. And that's it for this morning. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Tiffany. Thank and you. Appreciate you guys. Bye. Right. Bye.